Hey, how's it going? I'm recording this uh, because I got a light. See, I don't know if you can see it in the reflection of my glasses. Yeah, you ought to be able to see it. Anyway, uh, so yeah, because it's evening here in Kharkov, Ukraine, and I'm going to discuss the talk from NATO, from the West, of sending F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. <laughs> it's just... Mm. Look, these uh, F-16 fighter jets, right, they're not going to make a lick of difference, okay, on, on the battlefield. They, they most certainly will not. Hang on, sorry about that. They're not going to make any difference because, first of all, these planes are coming up on, uh, they're over 50 years old, okay, on the one hand. You know, not the individual planes themselves, but the design. I mean, they've been surpassed by other designs that are better and all the rest of it. And, of course, uh, Russia's air defense systems aren't going to have much trouble with them. The point of these F-16s is that they're bait. Bait to hook the Russians. Mm, let me explain. Mm. See, first of all, you have to understand that the people who are going to be flying these planes, number one, they're going to be flying them out of Poland or Romania. Okay, where NATO has some bases there. And the distance from those bases to the front lines in eastern Ukraine is over a thousand kilometers. That's about 700 miles over that distance. Okay, and so these planes are going to have to traverse an enormous distance, uh, even if they're going to fire standoff missiles that might have a, a couple hundred miles range, they're still going to have to cross roughly half of Ukraine to get within range. Okay. And so, of course, the Russians are going to use their air defense systems, which everybody admits are just, you know, second to none. And they're going to knock down a few of these planes, for sure. But I think that what NATO actually wants is for the Russians to hit the NATO bases in Romania and Poland. See? Mm. You have to understand that when the war started, in, um, in, in February, wow, it's coming up on a year. It's, uh, as I am saying this, it's going to be exactly 11 months since the start of this conflict. Time flies when you're living in misery now, doesn't it? Anyway, um, since the, 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 at the beginning of this conflict, the Russians hit the NATO training grounds at Yavoriv, just outside of Lviv. And they hit it with a couple of hypersonic missiles and a, and a bunch of other missiles. And they killed roughly uh, in excess of 400 um, volunteers, <laughs> they were NATO troops, okay? It was clear that these volunteers and other attached NATO personnel were kind of like, you know, staging what might be incoming NATO troops or gear and equipment. The Russians also, also destroyed something like $400 million worth of um, NATO uh, weaponry at Yavoriv. The base at Yavoriv, which was to the west of the city of Lviv, which is the westernmost major city in Ukraine, it was roughly, you know, 60 kilometers from the border with Poland, right? Mm. The Russians hit it early on, and it was the only time that they have so far used hypersonic weapons in this conflict, or for sure have used them, because there are other possibilities, other, other targets that they might have hit with hypersonics, but nobody's quite sure. But the point is, at Yavoriv, they hit him with hypersonics. The NATO um, air defense systems, uh, uh, you know, satellites and all that didn't even see them coming until they hit. Okay, because that's the point of hypersonic weapons, mm -hmm. that when they travel that fast, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten times faster, faster than the speed of sound. As I understand it, what happens is that the, the air in front of the missile becomes so compressed that this air compression apparently diffuses radar sig signatures and so, radar signals rather, and so they don't see the missile. I don't quite understand myself. It's not really important. The important thing is the upshot that the West didn't see these missiles coming. The Western militaries didn't see it coming. And it just totally destroyed that base. And more properly, it was marking its territory. The Russians were basically saying, don't fuck with us because we will fuck you up good. And, you know, NATO has been doing this very slow incremental process. You know, after uh, three, four months, they sent the uh, M777s in May, I believe it was, you know, three months into the conflict. And then after that, it was, you know, the IMR system. I mean, it's been a slow escalation of weapon systems, right? And now they're talking about F-16s. Now, they're also talking about tanks. But as I said in a, a previous video yesterday, I, I, I do believe I said, you know, tanks require all kinds of people and, and, and equipment that you have to ship all the way across Ukraine. Whereas planes, 
you know, just need one pilot. And for him, you know, a full tank of gas, for him to fly into Ukraine, send his missiles to whatever targets that they're trying to hit, and fly back to Poland or Romania, right? And so clearly this is kind of like a bait, because these planes are older. That is, they're more vulnerable to modern uh, Russian air defense systems. And so the point, obviously, is to either knock down some F-16s and, and create the justification for better planes, like the F-15s and eventually the F-35s, right? Or to have the Russians do a similar strike as they did at Yagodiv on Polish or Romanian territory, which would automatically trigger Article 5 of NATO, of the NATO Treaty, and uh, bring in NATO in a direct confrontation with Russia. Now, the Russians aren't stupid. They're probably not going to hit the Polish air bases where these uh, F-16s are being staged. They could, whenever they wanted to. I don't think that they're going to do it because it's clearly a political decision. I mean, it really would trigger full-on NATO war with Russia. And the Russians, of course, don't want that. It's not so much that they're afraid of NATO. They want to keep the rest of the world China, India, the non-aligned nations, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, they want to keep them on side. It's, it's a diplomatic political issue. It's not a military issue. If it was just military, they'd blow those, uh, those, those bases to smithereens and there wouldn't be anything that the Americans or NATO could do about it, right? But it's a political issue. And so clearly what the um, US NATO is trying to do is dangle these F-16s as a bait. If they knock them out of the sky, escalate with F-15s and uh, F-35s, probably just make the leap to F-35s and be done with it already. Um, or if they hit the bases, even better, because it would trigger Article 5. But that option I don't think is going to happen. But knocking those F-16s out of the air, out of the sky, the Russians are definitely going to do that, right? And this notion that the pilots are going to be Ukrainian, come on, man. See, it takes years, an enormous amount of training, very expensive training as I understand it, to train a pilot to fly an F-16. Uh, the Ukrainians have never, uh, as, as far as I know, they've never used F-16s, so they're not going to have trained pilots. So the pilots, who are they going to be? They're going to be NATO. They might have the fiction of being private military contractors wearing Ukrainian uniforms, but they're NATO. Mm -hmm. They knock off, the Russians knock off a few uh, F F-16s, rather. And, um, you know, that would lose the pilot, of course, potentially escalate into more deadly aircraft to support the Kiev regime in its final desperate gasps, because we really are coming to the end of this conflict. But most of all, what they want to do is, is trigger some sort of justification in the West to escalate. In and of themselves, the F-16s aren't going to do shit. They're certainly not going to change the, the, the battle in Bakhmut. They're not going to change the outcome of this war. It's just a way to increase the pressure on the West to escalate. Because what's happening is that in the West, in Washington and in Brussels, people like Victoria Newland, Anthony Blinken, uh, uh, Wendy Sherman, that whole crowd of, of uh, you know, warmongering neoliberals, neocons, or whatever you want to call them, and Jen Stoltenberg, the president of NATO in Brussels, they all want to escalate this war. It's the military, the military of the Western nations as well as the United States, that do not want to escalate because they know what they're going to get. Because Yavoriv was the lesson. See? Why do you think the Russians hit it so early in the conflict? I do believe, if memory serves, they hit it like March 7th or March 11th. It was early March, that's the point, which is barely two, three weeks into this conflict. It was the Russians marking their territory, basically telling NATO, don't come into this conflict because we can hit you and we can hurt you, like we did in Yavoriv, where 400 of your contractors and quote-unquote volunteers got blown to kingdom come, and $400 million worth of gear went sayonara, baby. Yeah, you see what's going on. See, the American and European militaries know what they're dealing with, and they want no piece of it. It's the political leadership that is desperate to escalate. Why do you think the escalation in weapons has been so long and stretched out? Like I said previously, 
It was in May that they started sending these howitzers, the M777s. That really didn't make much of a difference. And then a couple of months after that, I think it was June, July, July August, if I recall correctly, they sent the HIMARS with a big kerfuffle, but they didn't send the long-range missiles of the HIMARS. It was only the short-range ones, right? And then after that, you know, it, it's been now they're talking patriots and tanks. See, it's this very slow uh, um, escalation in the weaponry. Why do you think that is? Uh, what, because they didn't have the gear? No, they had the gear, but they didn't want to give it. The military, the Western militaries didn't want to give it. And it's been the political pressure of the neocons, the warmongers, who have been slowly escalating this, and now we're up to airplanes. Airplanes seem an easy fix, because the, insofar as the, the different tanks and armored vehicles are concerned, you know, each of them requires enormous logistics, all kinds of gear and men, trained men, to operate the, the armored personnel carriers and the, and the fighting vehicles and the tanks, and also maintenance, repair, moving them around. They actually have like a special crane for these things, you know. It's, it's all kinds of complicated, whereas a plane, this is one guy. One guy who hops in his cockpit in Poland, where all the weapons are and the maintenance and everything is hunky-dory. He flies out 500 kilometers or however far he dares because of Russian air defense systems. Let goes of, let, let's go, let let's go, sorry, of his missiles, and, um, you know, attacks the Russians that way, you know, under the guise of being part of the Ukrainian armed force, of the Ukrainian air force, which is a fiction, as I explained, okay? So it's just bait for the Russians. I don't think that the Russians are going to take the bait insofar as hitting the bases, as I mentioned before. I do think that they're going to blow those F-16s out of the sky. And then the issue will become, will that hysterical warmongering click in the political class of the West have the gumption to escalate to the next level, to the F-35s, to something better, more modern, because they're going to say, oh yeah, but the F-16 is an old plane, 50 years old, but we got the F-35, it's brand new, and it's never been tested in combat, so let's test it in combat. Mm -hmm. I think that's more or less the direction of travel insofar as escalation by NATO is concerned. In and of themselves, the planes mean nothing, okay? And all this, you know, onanism, because that's what it is. Onanism, look it up, okay? <laughs> all this onanism over the F-16 and its ability and the, and the missiles that it can... I've seen all kinds of threads on Twitter telling me that, oh, we could do this, oh, we could do that, you know? It's just stupid. It's really dumb because they're not going to make a lick of difference. It's just to politically escalate this war and get NATO to fight against the Russians directly. Understand what's going on. 